how difficult was it to film that? Because everything oh. was moving and it was yeah. chaotic, it was constant, and it was not a huge multi-gazillion dollar budget. No, no, no. Um, yeah, it was, it was made on a shoestring budget, and we had permits to shoot all over Hong Kong, and that's one of the great things about shooting in Hong Kong, um, that it was very film friendly, and that the permit process was very um, easy. It also was all free, so all those like walking around the city was all free. But we didn't have the budget to close down any streets, so we were constantly always just dealing with just real crowds. So. None of them are extras, they're just real people walking on them. So rather than, you know, on like a real production, you shut down the streets, you bring your own extras. In this case, because we only had two characters, I'm like, well, we're just going to plop our two characters in the middle of all that chaos. And it really, and Hong Kong really is as chaotic as it looks on screen. There's just constantly, just tons of people all the time. But it totally worked. Yeah, like I feel like it really added to the authenticity of the film. Um, and the, but for the actors, it took a little bit of getting used to. I mean, they're, you know, like Brian, he's used to running and gunning on the streets of New York. Um, but he's like, I, he's never experienced anything like this. Um, so I think like in the shots where they're, you see the two of them in the middle of a big crowd. We would usually shoot those across the street with a long lens, and they're kind of then they would kind of just blend in, and people would walk by and not even realize they were actors. They thought they were just you know two people talking on the street. So those all work really well, and I love that people would just walk by and don't even know what's going on. But then there's also a lot of these sequences that these really long walk and talk sequences that would go on for like five to seven minutes. And those were all designed to not, like, I, I didn't want to cut away from them if I didn't have to. Um, so, but those, it's, it's, it's a little harder to blend in because you've got the entire crew walking backwards in front of them, and we're not supposed to cut. So, you know, in like a seven minute sequence, um, on minute five, you'll have some expat waving to the camera saying hi to their mom. And then we gotta reset and start all over again. And that would happen over and over again. See, now everybody who walks down the street, you know, because they did that, you're gonna be like, are they in a movie? Are you shooting a movie? Um, talk about uh, Brian and Jamie. So it's interesting because, in, in case you don't know, they were, they're, they're a couple, they're now married, and I think, were they engaged while they were doing this film? Um, yes, they got engaged right before shooting this movie. But right. when they were cast, they were not engaged yet. But they were dating. They, they were dating. So they've always been a couple. Yeah. So I found it interesting because, you know, they kind of have to have that sort of awkward chemistry, yeah. but, you know, they definitely have chemistry, obviously, that they're together, but it's that awkward like yeah. first meeting and I believed them that they had just met rather than you know they yeah. live together and they're about to get engaged yeah. and they this is it yeah um, so for the actors they did tell me that it was harder to shoot part one of the movie than part two of the movie because part two you know like the chemistry really came out in full force they were really familiar with each other you know it's sort of like the deepening of their feelings for each other but part one when she first meet him and she keeps saying it's like having to unknow Brian was the hardest part. Um, and, on, and on the actress part, they asked for separate hotel rooms during production because they thought that would add to the sexual tension if they just sort of stayed away from each other for three weeks. Um, Brian wasn't very happy about that, but uh, he went along with it. So yeah, and we actually shot part one of the movie last, so we shot part one of the movie first, and then, I mean, sorry, part two of the movie first, and then part one Why? later. I mean, for, for two reasons. One, because of his facial hair. So we shot that first so that he could shave and get clean shaven. Um, and also, it's it also has to do with sort of like the chemistry. It's sort of like, you know, you just got here, we're comfortable, and let's, you know, let's jump right in. Um, and then for the part where they're supposed to be strangers, meaning for the first time, let's save that for for the second part of shooting. Interesting. And if anybody has any questions, you know, there, is there one back there? Perfect. By the way, I love your shoes. She's got little oh, bunny shoes on. Uh, very Asian. And you're... <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, go ahead. When you were writing it, was it one long conversation and then you kind of found the spots to disperse? I mean, was it when you were just... Paper in front of you. Yeah. 
was it just one long conversation and then you kind of imagined or yeah. came up with spots as you went along? Um, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I actually wrote probably 90% of the locations into the movie Richard. because I, um, into the script, because I had lived in Hong Kong before, so I know it very intimately, and so much of the film was inspired by my time spent in Hong Kong, and you know, I knew going I wanted to highlight as many of the places as possible. So I wrote, so it's like I had mapped out their walk in my head and then did the walk myself many times when I would go location scouting and such. So, so even though the conversation through the different various uh, iterations of the, dra uh, of the script have changed, um, the general walk has always been the same. Like I, I wanted them to hit these specific spots. Um, and I don't know how many people in the audience have been to Hong Kong. If you're very familiar with Hong Kong, you actually know that is not the way to get to Wong Kwai Fong. It's, <laughs> they take a really, really long time to get there, which again, it's like I have to take artistic license because otherwise the movie would be over. It's like, oh, here it is. Or it's like she could have taken an Uber. Which I have to say, when I like, wrote the script, Uber wasn't really around, because now people are like, why didn't she just take a Uber? Like, why didn't she have some other directions? Right, and like, she didn't have GPS on her phone. I was like, who doesn't have GPS well, on their phone? because she's a tourist. In, so like, when I go to Hong Kong, I just buy those cheap, like, phones at the at the airport, where it's just your very basic phone. So that was, that was the reason. So then by part two, when she's living there, she now has a smartphone. And um, this is based on sort of a true story with you. This happened to you, didn't Yeah. Um, so, you know, I have lived in Hong Kong before, so a lot of this is, you know, me sort of wanting to, it's my love letter to Hong Kong. And also, it was based on a real life encounter. It was sort of based on sort of two different encounters I had, and I meshed them into one. Um, so in one of the encounters, you know, I, I had met this gentleman and we spent a night much like this and then we were out till I think like 6 a.m. in the morning like talking and we went to sing karaoke and then at the end of the night um, he asked for my phone number and and asked me to go to dinner and uh, when I went to dinner I think like a couple nights later like I thought I was going on a date and then as soon as we sat down he like started talking about his girlfriend and then I'm like oh my gosh like this whole flirtation I just made up in my head but then I also thought we walked around Hong Kong for like, you know, the entire night, and you didn't mention once that you had a girlfriend. That was very bizarre to me. So, so that was kind of like the um, the inspiration for this story. And did you know that um, Emily is also a toy designer for real? Yes, so Those are awesome. real toys. <laughs> Those are your real toys. Yeah. So moves like Jagger, Justin Bieber. If you want to buy one, they're available. 